Hi, my name is Rich Brusky, and I'm the U.S. Representative for Peebo and Music here in the United States. I'm here with Adam McCullough, who is uh, uh, um, from the United Kingdom uh, Peebo and office. And we're here to talk about uh, um, uh, Peebas and how it is impacting uh, teachers and children and music programs, but specifically in Chicago, Illinois, where West Point School of Music, which is a leading uh, music school uh, in, the, in, in Chicago itself, um, has been using PBUS for some time, and we have two of their leading teachers here. Um, uh, and uh, so I'd like them to both to uh, introduce themselves, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and um, your experiences with PBUS. Ashanti, would you like to start? Hi, my name is Ashanti Sims. I am the director of programs for West Point School of Music. Um, I actually started playing clarinet through this program when I was 13, and I'll not tell my age now, but it's been a while, and I return to um, give back to the community and teach the younger students. Thank you, Ashanti. Manasha? I'm Manasha Champion. I am the Associate Director of Programs. I'm also the high brass coach. I've been playing trumpet since I was seven and been teaching it since I was about 10 years old. So it's great to, to uh, join my my dad's organization, and I've been working with kids on P-Buzz instruments for about, I want to say about three years. Okay. About three years. Manasha, could you, could you tell the audience a little bit about West Point School of Music in general? It's a not-for-profit organization that started in 2011. It was the vision of West Point has always been to give opportunities to kids and disadvantaged, dis, um, I forgot, I don't know how to say the word. Uh, disadvantaged? Disadvantaged neighborhoods, yes. Disadvantaged neighborhoods and, and, um, and provide, provide music instruction for free. Mm -hmm. So that's something we've been, that's something we've been working on since, and we finally got our building, our facility for it about two years ago. And that's just what we do. We have a we have a few staple staple music music um a few staple st staple things we do here at West Point, which is steel pan manufacturing, but also a steel pan music program. So not only do we teach kids how to play the pan, but we make the instruments. Mm -hmm. And we also have our, oh, go ahead. I would say you, I really you also teach in the, uh, in the, in the Chicago public schools classrooms, right? Right. So we go, we, we are vendors at different uh, Chicago public schools mm -hmm. and we go out there and we have these, and, and these are the programs that we've, been instructors instructors at uh, our standard your standard concert band instruments. We have urban music makers, and that's when we go to different schools and we teach these kids these standard concert band instruments. So how many how many schools were you in last year, for example? Um, I think it was about eight, mm -hmm. about eight schools. Okay, all right. Ashanti, uh, can you uh, to tell us a little bit more about? Um, you are, you know, what 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 parts that you play in the program? You're a teacher. You're also in charge of programs. How does that work with the with with the various schools? How does that how do, how do you organize that? Well, my title is director of program, um, and that consists of um, your basic program planning. Um, so I discuss contracts and scheduling with our CPS locations. Um, as well as creating the in-house schedule, so whichever classes we choose to run for that semester. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, I am also the clarinet instructor. So I keep my studio, my students playing, um, and that's clarinets across the board, beginning, advanced, um, mm -hmm. intermediate. Um, we have different days and different rehearsals for them as well. Mm -hmm. So all and things I know it together. Yeah, and I know you teach PBUS as part of your yes, classrooms. He, yes, when um, so we we felt like we were missing something. Um, a couple years ago, we started band in 
uh, fourth grade, and we did fourth through sixth generally. But we had so many families coming in, like, you know, their younger siblings wanted to play. And so we're like, we really don't want to miss out on a new generation of kids. So we went back for third grade. And um, the year we chose to do that, we had another principal say, hey, you know, we would just love if you could come and teach our second graders. And it was it was wild to us, but we're like, hey, we have to figure out something so that we can build up our students. And so um, when we when we took on the program to start in second grade, um, we found out about P-Buzz and P-Bones, P-Trumpets. Um, for that model, we decided to go with, for the second grade model, we decided to go with the P-Buzz instrument. We found that it was, um, it was a lot easier to manage than, um, than a traditional concert band instrument. They're much mm -hmm. smaller and the P-Buzz is much lighter while also teaching them how to buzz, how to take care of an instrument, um, and getting getting these kind of uh, these micro movements, and it kind of gets them used to what happens when you move over to a traditional band instrument. So it sounds like you are looking at creating a pathway, if you will, to band. Does that does that? Yeah, I would say that's process? how we've used it in the past. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do the kids respond? I think the kids love people. Mm -hmm. They they feel like um, I'll say they feel like the big kids. They feel like yeah. they are a part of band, which they are, and it, we just have the tool that allows them to feel that way. So we're very mm -hmm. grateful for people, for sure. Right, right. Thank you, Manasha. You, so you're the you're the high brass instructor. How do you feel about P buzz for that in that in that second and third grade level? Well, it's it's been the foundation of great you know, uh, great brass playing students we have. It's mm -hmm. the, to introduce the, you know, not everybody is has that natural instinct to buzz and figure it out quick, you know, so for, for select few, select few kids. So the ones that naturally take a, a, a quick liking to it, you want to keep tabs on it about, okay, this could be a trombone player. This could eventually be a, a trumpet player. This could be a tuba player. And the mm -hmm. ones who don't play brass still have just a great foundation of hearing notes, understanding that this is F, this is G, you know, one is F, two mm -hmm. is G. But you still have that understanding of what the note is supposed to sound like, and you know how to read music. So when you go to play your clarinet, P-Buzz is still beneficial in that way from the year before. So, I mean, some of my... Some of my most advanced uh, high brass players started on either P buzz or P trumpet. Started okay. with a P trumpet, and I said, "Take care of this instrument, and when you move up, then you get your brass." Mm -hmm. So it's been it's been extremely helpful in that way, and it's been the the starting point for so many brilliant young musicians we have here. So I'm very grateful for P buzz, and I'm sure they love it. Right. And uh, it sounds like the kids are motivated to to move on and, and get that brass instrument. Right. Yeah. It's it's the it's like the incentive. It's mm -hmm. like okay, if I you can't move on if you don't take care of this this mm -hmm. P trumpet. It's a, it's very important that you treat this like you would treat the most expensive instrument you'll come across. Mm -hmm. And you see kids that say, okay, if that means I can get my trumpet, and they do everything they can. So. It's uh, it's great training as well, just for mm -hmm. being responsible, being accountable. Mm -hmm. so. so the uh, the P buzz has a it really doesn't have a trombone mouthpiece, it doesn't have a trumpet mouthpiece. It's kind of in between. As a brass player, how do you feel about that? It's it that that's a great point. I feel that if for me, it's all about paying attention to the range and how high they can get on it, regardless of the size. Mm -hmm. I feel like if uh, I feel like if they're if it's easier for them to go high, but it's more difficult to go low, mm -hmm. I would start them off on a trumpet, a cornet, something of that sort. And then if it's you know vice versa, I mean opposite, if it's easier for them to go low and especially play low and loud, sound real powerful on a P buzz or the P-Bone, then I know where to start them after. And, I'm, and, I, and I always try to go 
trombone and then maybe move to euphonium mm -hmm. but yeah that's 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 been how i and, and of course you you can get it wrong sometimes and you figure that at, they're also getting older you know muscles are changing so the next year they're not the same kid they were before mm -hmm. so you might have to switch the program however though it's been a great base to uh to have my judgment on where they should go after it's it's always been great that that middle sized mouthpiece that's created sure of course you're always going after a balanced instrumentation and so it's been Absolutely. it's right, easy right. if you can if you can move people the right directions you'll have the the the, the, the band will be improved the, the young band will right. be improved as well as the older band so you know Absolutely. Yeah, Ashante, uh, uh, tell you tell me a little bit about your PBOS curriculum. How do you how do you teach them? Um, so the first day we go in with PBOS, <clears throat> we we tend to do music theory from jump. No matter how young we start, we want to give the the basics. So we start off with your every good boy is fine, right? Mm -hmm. And and even earlier, what what's the staff? What's the treble clef? You know, so mm -hmm. we'll start there. Um, and once we do introduce the P buzz, I think the first thing we do is just making sure everybody understands how to hold it. Because for some reason, the right and the left, they don't really get it the first day. So we spend a, a reasonable amount of time just making sure they understand how to hold the instrument. Once we get past that, um, we're then showing the, we, we use the letters on the instrument. I know they have the numbers and the letters. Um, but we like to relate it back to music theory that they'll be using for their traditional concert band instruments. So we opt to do the letters. Um, and once we go through the letters, we show them what it looks like on the staff. We get them to buzz through all the notes. Um, and then we introduce um, small songs. Mm -hmm. Actually, before that, we introduce rhythm. So, you know, you want to play F for eight, eighth notes move on to the next and, you know, do patterns like that. After that, then we introduce songs. Um, Coach Nash is a genius when it comes to incorporating soundtracks and rhythms and making up chants and different songs that go along with what they're playing just to keep them engaged because, as we all know, students, whew, they, uh, they get distracted very easily. So we have to find ways to keep them engaged and interested in the instrument. Um, for that year and so that we have uh, longevity and they're able to move on to their brass instrument or woodwind instrument. Right. So in second grade, how long is your, how long do you use PBUS? Is it a number of days, a number of weeks? How does your, how does your class schedule work for, for that? Um, so the last year we used PBUS, we opted for PBUS recorders, Boom Whacker, and I believe I'm missing one. We have four semesters of different instruments. And oh no, actually we did P bus twice. That's what it was. We did P bus twice with Boom Whackers and recorders. And when we switch them out like that by semester, it keeps them engaged in music in general, um, and but also keeps them current on the concepts of music uh, education in general. So we were able to um, semester one start on the P buzz, go to recorders, and it's pretty much the same in terms of theory. Boom Whackers is more like, hey, we just came back from Christmas, let's have some fun, like, you know, so we, we introduce that and they play different songs on the, on the big screen, and then we bring it back, hey, you guys are moving into third grade, you guys are moving into the next grade, it's time to be big boys, big girls, let's get ready for our concert band instruments. Okay. All right. And so then in third grade, do you introduce the, um, you introduce band instruments yeah. in third grade then? We and what does that people. look like? What does that look like? Same process, actually, just with the, um, with the traditional instruments. So mm -hmm. if they, if they are starting for the first time in third grade, then you go through your theory at the beginning of the year. Um, we do a session where we decide if they are, if their buzz is better on a trumpet or a trombone. Um, mm -hmm. If you aren't buzzing at all, you come to my side with the woodwinds. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so you could be flute, clarinet. And then once you go to the woodwind side, we determine which mouthpiece is better for you there. Um, mm -hmm. And then we're off to the races. Now we are um, 
in the standard of excellence book, and we begin K6, number one, and we move them through the year. Right. Thank you. Um, Manasha, one, one of the things that we talk about uh, is uh, teaching kids to use air uh, on the PBUS. Um, tell us, can you tell us about your experience with that and how that relates to as they move into the into, into, into band instruments? We just always tell them constantly, it's called wind instruments for a reason. You got to put some air in there. Mm -hmm. You got to. And, and P buzz, P buzz for these second graders and these real young kids, that's that first example that they get. You're not going to reach up to, up to B, you know, mm -hmm. the top of that P buzz without air. Mm -hmm. And that's, we, we, we turn it into competitions for the kids and we divide them up into teams and we say, okay, if anybody from this team can come and play this high B and play this high B, you know, I might have something special. And then you end up just getting pizza for the whole class because, you know, the kids <laughs> just going to cry and all that. But, yeah. but yeah, we, 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 we try to come up with a bunch of different, different ways to, to get kids to really reach for that note. And that, that always comes from embouchure and air and, mm -hmm. and, that's just that 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 put wind through the instrument, put play the instrument, don't let the instrument play you. That talk starts from second grade with the P bus all the way to when they're in eighth grade getting ready for high school. It's like you need air, you need air. And uh the P bus is the recently for West Point students has been the first example for kids coming in second and third grade. Mm -hmm. They're getting that, they're getting that lesson through a P. P buzz, P bone, P trumpet instrument. So when they so they're coming into third grade and starting um, band instruments, do you see the impact of P buzz on how how they use air? Are they getting a better tone, sound? Is that does that helpful? Yes, absolutely. And 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 for the third graders, so if we have a new fourth grader come in, we'll try to if we have these. You know, if we have our brass instruments, our actual brass, we'll mm -hmm. try to give those to the older kids. So say a new fifth grader or somebody who was in for coming in the fifth plan, we'll have those instruments for them. And then we'll have P trumpets and P bones for our third graders, our brand new kids coming in. Mm -hmm. But I, I can see my second graders going into third grade compared to the brand new third grade students we have. You definitely see a difference in wind and embouchure. Because these third graders, they had that training on P-Buzz last year. Right. They did, it's, it's certain things that it's, it kind of just kicks in. Like, okay, I remember this. Especially, like Ashanti said, you know, we have we had two semesters of it. And that and that really makes a difference, you can see, with these kids coming in. And they kind of already have this muscle memory if they make it through the summer that um, – it's just easier for them to grasp it than a brand new kid. So. Right. Appreciate that. Um, Ashanti, you talked about having boom whackers and recorders and P buzz. Um, have you ever put them together in an ensemble? No, I <laughs> and actually we realized that last year. I said, How why did we never put those together? I it just never crossed my mind. And um I I moving forward, we definitely will. Maybe we'll introduce that um in the last semester and make an ensemble. Okay. I mean, you know, it might be a little chaotic at first, but at least the kids can learn about playing an ensemble, right? We'll, we'll make it through. We'll make it through. <laughs> so um um what are you able to teach that would be more difficult to teach without P buzz? Ashanti, let's start with you. Can you ask the question one more time? I say, what what are you able to teach with PBUS that would be more difficult to teach without PBUS? Oh, I I think it's um I, I would say brass instruments primarily. Mm -hmm. Um I see the effects for woodwind players as well in terms of um discipline. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a greater impact on the people that move to playing a brass instrument mm -hmm. um, as far as embouchure and as uh, Menashe was saying, the, the wind and embouchure mix. Mm -hmm. I think it's more beneficial for brass players. Yeah. Menashe, how about you? What things can you teach with PBAs that you might not be able to do as easily without PBAs? 
I think determination, determination to actually work for a note. I think if you have, if you have somebody playing a piano, you hit it, there's the note. Mm -hmm. And then if you have somebody, even on a recorder, you kind of blow and then, you know, something's going to come out. It's going to be a note. And I think with P Buzz, P Buzz has really brought this, this idea to kids about you have to really to, to get this note to sound how you want. You have mm -hmm. to really work. You have to really think about what you're doing. And you have to put both sides of your brain together. And you gotta mm -hmm. try to produce this note. And that's gonna happen when you're starting to play a clarinet, when you're starting to play a sax, when you're starting to play a trumpet. When you have to go to these traditional concert band instruments, if it's not percussion, you have to work for these notes. These notes aren't just going to come to you. Mm -hmm. And P Buzz has introduced that to our our youngest grade of kids that we teach. Instead mm -hmm. of them um, hitting a boom whacker all year and saying, okay, I can just hit this on the ground, and then boom, I got a note. Now you're introducing this, this, this skill that they're going to have to keep working that that they're going to use for the rest of their life. It's like, okay, it's not coming, but it will come. Mm -hmm. You got to keep at it. And I think before P buzz, we really, we really couldn't introduce that idea how we wanted to these second graders. And now we have that. So and I, I think I that would wanna, be. I yeah. just want to speak on the, the students that enter in third and fourth grade, but maybe smaller. Um, it's given us the opportunity um, and, and giving them some relief from the frustration of holding this brass instrument and it, something just overcoming something that's so big for them. I really think P Bus has given an opportunity for younger students to be introduced to band earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. And earlier is better, isn't it? Yes. Of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or they get involved in other things and and uh, yep. have that opportunity. Great. Great. Um is there anything, are there any questions I haven't asked that you'd like to talk about? If there's something you've thought about before this interview, they said, you know, I'd like to comment on this. Or Adam, if you do you have any any additional follow-up questions? I was just going to ask one, in, in terms of teaching peoples, because obviously, as well as it being a new instrument for the kids, it was a new instrument for the both of you. Did you, did you just pick it up and went with your gut or did you explore any of the resources that we offer on the website was it was it just a case of exploring together uh primarily just exploration um and i i'm a, a woodwind player at heart i am 100 percent woodwind so it was different for me um but it's not impossible to grasp so i was very grateful for um the the notes on the instrument i think it's important for kids to be able to see especially if we're going to start young it's important for them to see their positioning and and see the notes that they're playing um but for me i i like it too it's it's a rainbow pattern i like to look it, it's fun right um and once i got the basics of it we then introduced the um we use the p buzz book so we go to mary had a little lamb and um there's there's another song we like cross buns. yeah so <laughs> always um, hot cross buns. <laughs> yeah it's always a good time so yeah it's, it, it's been a great tool for me as well right right i will awesome. say that as a as a as a high brass coach i had no other choice i had to get on that instrument and figure it out but it was very easy straight to the point and i i I definitely explored it. I realized you can take all those notes even up an octave if you really push for it. You know, every every note on there, you can bring it up there. You can take it up there. So I I actually had a lot of fun on it, especially when me and Coach Courtney first started teaching at our one of ours one of our partner schools, Emmett Till. He was there working with the second graders, and that's when I was really figuring it out. And also, it's it's important. It's definitely important for me. To be accustomed to these p these p buzz instruments because you know a kid will say all day it's not working i'm not i'm not getting it's not working you have to be able to take your mouthpiece put it in the instrument and say no see blah, 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 see it's great and and that helps them that helps them keep fighting you know keep going so mm -hmm. i uh i had a great time on still having a great time 
So that, that that makes me laugh because every time I say six notes on one partial, the trumpet players go, oh, yeah? Watch oh, this. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can take it up there. There's endless possibilities, man. <laughs> That's yeah. great. That's great. Well, thank you, um, Anasha and Ashanti. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk about PIBAs. Um, uh, we we see ch teachers around the country, um, you know, moving into the PIBAs and having more kids join band because of their experience with PIBAs. And I know that your experience has been the same. And I think it was important to talk about, you know, what's happening in Chicago as well as what's happening in Indianapolis and Dallas and uh, and uh, Louisville and Florida and down in Miami, and uh, so you're part of this larger group of teachers that are uh, utilizing PBUS to help more kids in our pathway to band. 